welcome back to my channel for those of you that are new here my name is Danielle and I make videos in my car um so today I have a story time for you guys that I don't know why I just thought of the other day but I don't think I included this in my series in the toads before the prince so this is going to be about toad number three and it's actually what drew the line for me to stop talking to him I think in that story I couldn't remember what did me over what was like the last straw that did me over with losing contact with him or cutting him out of my life and I just remembered the other night so I think what I chopped it up to in that story was maybe because he had cheated on me or something along those lines but I couldn't quite remember what actually happened well, this is what happened. This is why I cut that crackhead out of my life. So if you want to know why things ended between me and toad number two, just keep on watching. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a summary if you haven't watched that video, but I suggest that you do. So in quick summary, what happened between that relationship? Did I say toad number two, toad number three? The last relationship that I was in before I met Hector is this guy. I think I named him Javi or Javier, something along those lines. And so I was with Javi for maybe a year. I don't remember. And at first it was really good, but he was pretty crazy. He was really insecure. He was always accusing me of stuff that wasn't happening. And long story short, I found out that he was actually the one cheating. He was super unfaithful. He was, when I say crazy, like I'm crazy too, okay? Like if somebody's bringing out my bad side, then they're going to get my bad side. But he was always accusing me of things that were not going on. And I found out that he was like on a dating site. He was sleeping around with other girls. He was super psychotic and a little bit abusive. He kicked in my car, he bashed in my laptop. He just was not a good person, you know, not, not relationship material. He would have these horrible mood swings and I never knew where they came from or why he was like freaking out or lashing out. And he had disclosed to me that previously he was on drugs. So I kind of assumed uh, things would always go missing when he was around, like money went missing, my phones, like devices, like electronics, things like that. And the sad part was this guy was much older than me and he had two kids. So you would think that the maturity level when you're 34 years old, you would be more mature. You have a family, you have things to, you know, children to take care of, stuff to handle. but. Maturity doesn't necessarily come for everybody. And I ended up finding out afterward that yes, he was on drugs and he was stealing from me and all that stuff. But what made me stop talking to him was not the lying, was not the stealing, was not the cheating, it was this incident. So this happened towards the end of our relationship it was one night me and my cousin we were gonna go out and she had come over and it was like i said it was already towards the end of our relationship and i don't even think i was necessarily even with him i think we were talking trying to be cordial but i think we were already kind of broken up that i can remember well me and her were gonna have a girl's night out and stupid me i decide to answer his phone call that night and he's like so what are you doing where are you going and he can hear that I was driving because I answered it on Bluetooth I should have just ignored the call and left it like that but no I didn't I answered the phone and I had told him that we are going to be going out you know whatever whatever which information I did not need to disclose to him we were not together you're not my man like why am I disclosing this because I'm stupid oh so he invited me and her to go to this bar not in the town that I live in in the town that he lives in she I don't think she wanted to go I think she was against the idea I don't think she really liked him too much because of everything that he had already put me through but I was like no it'll be fun he convinced me that he'll be on his best behavior because like I said he would have these bad mood swings and he convinced me he would be you know on his best behavior and that the bartender, which I think was his friend, would be hooking us up with the drinks. So I'm like, come on, like, let's just go. We're gonna get free drinks. 
whatever. So we drive over there. It takes us about 20, 30 minutes to get out there and we show up to the bar and he's kind of acting like a little standoffish with me. I don't exactly remember what he was saying, but I remember him being standoffish and talking shit. So like I looked at my cousin, I was like, dude, I don't know like what, you know, what tonight's going to hold. Cause I, I could already feel like the vibe was really off. So he gets us our drinks and we sit down. So he's there with two of his friends. I think one I think one of the friends actually worked there. So we're literally at a table. My cousin is sitting across from me and he's sitting next to her and then his other friend sitting next to me. Why we sat in that fashion or that way, I have no idea. He was actually like being really, really friendly with my cousin. And I remember it bothering me a little bit like why are you being so friendly? Because he was being an asshole to me. He was kind of saying little rude, snide remarks to me. And he was being really nice to her. Even at one point, I remember him like putting his arm around her, like talking, like being really friendly. I was more mad. Like, why are you treating me like shit when you're clearly not like in a bad mood because you're being friendly with everybody else, but you're treating me like shit. It was to the point where his other friend that, um, the other guy that was there that I think worked there, he came over and he was hitting on me. And he was telling me, oh, like they're, they're a couple, right? They're so cute together. Talking about my cousin and my ex slash whatever the F we were at that moment. I don't even know what we were. And I was like, wait, you think they're together? And he's like, yeah. And like, and he's like asking me for my number and my information. I don't exactly remember what happened, but at that point, I think Javi had noticed that that guy was talking a little bit too much to me. And he snapped. I don't know exactly what he said. I just remember he was talking shit, probably calling me every name in the book. And he was ignoring me the whole night. If he wasn't ignoring me, he was treating me like shit. And then he snapped because somebody was giving me attention. I was like, dude, let's just go. I tell my cousin, let's just go. Oh, he's like freaking out, talking shit. I don't even know what he's saying. He just snaps. Like I said, he was like in this mood to fight since we got there. And I don't understand what I did because like you convinced me to come and then you're going to do this, you know? He ends up like while we're taking off, he was throwing stuff at my car. He did throw his keys at my windshield. I was like, holy shit shit so like we took off really fast okay and I was like dude I'm like apologizing to my cousin like oh my gosh like I can't believe this just happened and like it was scary you know like he was so unpredictable in his behavior and his actions and it, it was scary I couldn't believe that he literally like just lashed out and was throwing stuff at my car we still wanted to go out we're like you know what fuck him my cousin's like you still need a girl's night like you know screw him basically like let's let's go do our own thing so I came back to my town so there's only one place that I really like to go out in my town just because it's like super chill there's like a bar there's like a dance floor it's really like chill it's not like a club it's but it's good like good vibes I was like let's just go there and she's like okay we're out we're doing our thing like we're just like sitting down talking drinking like it's just you know me and her and then all of a sudden to the left hand side I see at the bar Javi oh it's not just him he's like on this girl he has his arm wrapped around her he's like buying her drinks and my cousin is like dude like don't even pay attention that, to that like he's doing it to get under your skin and of course like it got under my skin and she's like dude don't even let it get to you don't even pay attention to it but I couldn't believe that he showed up to the bar that me and her are at like he left the bar with his friends to come follow where me and her are at just to create a show just to like you know cause some friction I was really trying not I was like you know what fuck him then I'm not even gonna pay attention to that so me and her just you know went about our business well then me and her are dancing and all of a sudden he comes to the dance floor and he grabs me by my wrist and pulls me outside the club or the bar with him and then she's like hey let her go let her go and like he's like pulling me with him and he she's telling him dude let her go and then so we get outside and she follows me and I'm like, let me, I was like, let me just hear what he has to say or whatever. Well, I don't know 
I don't remember what he was saying. Probably some bullshit of why he was doing what he was doing. I don't remember the story. That's not really important. So while he's talking, he lights up a cigarette. My cousin is still kind of standing around waiting for me. Not necessarily right next to me, but a little bit further down. And she's waiting. She ends up coming over like, okay, like let's go now. And he's blowing his cigarette smoke in her face. Like so, so ugly, so disrespectful. And again, keep in mind, this is a grown ass man somebody who's 10 years older than us somebody who's a father of two kids and he's acting like so immature so childish for no reason he just went out to fight that night you know she was like she tells him don't blow your smoke in my face and he does it again and then she's like don't blow your smoke in my face like that's so disrespectful he literally doesn't listen to her when she tells him don't blow your smoke in my face so then i tell him stop blowing the smoke in her face like it's rude and he snaps at me I don't know he starts name calling I don't remember exactly what he's telling me but he's telling me off and that pissed my cousin off so she's like don't fucking talk to my cousin that way don't like don't talk to my cousin that way she starts defending me the next thing you know he gets his drink and he pours it on her head pours his drink on her head like we did we couldn't believe what just happened we're like like in shock i'm in shock she's in shock like are you kidding me and like the security saw him do it and like they start like yelling towards him and he takes off running it was so embarrassing this guy is a fucking grown-ass man and that's what you're doing to my family like are you kidding me are you kidding me? Like, we just couldn't believe that that what just happened. And we couldn't do anything about it. We literally just like, were in shock. Security saw it. They ended up walking us to, to my car so we can leave. That was the last straw. That was the last time I had ever talked to him again. Because I just, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe that he would do that. And that was just like, you can disrespect me all you want, but you don't disrespect my family. You just don't do that and that was it so that is why me and toad number three broke up that was the last straw he cheated on me he lied to me he stole from me but the minute that you disrespect my family that's it you're gone you're done after that that was it like there was no there was no turning back from that there's a lot of things that I I can put up with and I can tolerate even things that like people don't deserve chance after chance after chance but that was just like no, you're done, son. You're done. And yeah, needless to say, I never talked to that guy again. He was blowing up my phone after that. He was apologizing. He was saying how sorry he was, how embarrassed he is. If we can talk, just come outside. He, dude, after that, like he was, that's when I said he was stalking me. I don't, you guys just have to watch that first video so you know how crazy he was. I didn't spend that much time emphasizing the craziness because that video was so long. But after I broke up with him, he was psycho. He broke into my house when I wasn't there. He tried stealing my iPod when he broke in. It was just like, he was psycho. He was stalking me at work. He was calling me at work. He was calling and hanging up at my job. Like, nonstop, nonstop, all day long. He showed up at my work that, like... To the point like he wouldn't leave me alone that I had to call the cops, get a restraining order. Like he turned psycho, psycho. Like there was just some people, dude. And like I said, he went out that night looking for a fight. We did nothing to provoke him in order to do that. He had some serious, serious issues. But yeah, that's uh, my story time of the most disrespectful thing that anybody could ever do to any of my family members. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.